George Trevor was the architect responsible for the creation of the Spencer Mansion. As told in the video about his final moments, after the mansion had been complete, Oswald E. Spencer invited him and his wife and daughter to spend the night at the mansion. But to their misfortune, it would appear that they would simply become a part of Umbrella's experiments. George Trevor would never see his wife and daughter, as he would die of starvation while attempting to escape. We know what happened to his wife and daughter, but what exactly happened to his body? On the second floor of the mansion, in the room at the far left side, there's a deep hole through the floor where the STARS member must drop in to progress through the game. In this hollowed and claustrophobic area, you will find a gravestone with the name George Trevor engraved in it. This would be the final and exact location where George Trevor would collapse and starve to death after realizing the gravestone was intended for him. Here you would find the Eagle of South, Wolf of North book, including pages from George Trevor's diary, but his body would be missing. I don't understand why his grave would be placed in this particular spot, especially since the gravestone works as a secret passage to another lower area of the mansion. It also doesn't look like they literally buried his body in that ground, so why engrave his name on this gravestone? Why is there an open hole through the floor leading to this gravestone? In the original Resident Evil 1, this particular area is where you face off against Yon the giant snake for the last time. And as soon as it appears, it attacks a STARS member, misses, and breaks a hole through the floor, which explains why the open hole is there in the first place. However, in the remake of RE1, Yon does not appear in this area, and instead you fight the giant snake in the library. So why is this hole still there in the remake? Throughout the mansion, you'll find a few notes and clues left by George Trevor explaining what he went through and how he stayed hidden throughout the mansion. He even created a secret room hidden behind the art room. I like this. The outfit room is considered a secret room in the remake, and even Spencer was not aware of this room at all. The secret room in the piano room would also be a location where you find his diary. Here's when he explains that he's been kept in a room for security reasons. Was this the room he was being kept in? Or did he drop his diary while trying to quickly escape from the closing mechanical entrance? Either way, I want to know about his corpse's whereabouts, and I doubt that they buried his body in this specific spot. Maybe it was originally intended, in fact I, I think in the original, this is where they buried George Trevor's body, but since the original did not include Lisa Trevor or Crimson Head Zombies, I think that has a factor in his remake whereabouts. The remake version of RE1 introduced many additional locations, including a backyard cemetery. And even this backyard cemetery has a secret underground basement where a coffin is chained and suspended from the ceiling. By collecting all four masks found throughout the mansion and placing them in the correct statues, this will remove the chains holding the coffin, making it collapse on the floor with the lid wide open. A crimson head zombie will be revealed. A gate will come crashing down to block your exit and the only way to exit this confined area is by taking down the Crimson Head. I believe that this Crimson Head is in fact George Trevor. If anyone would be placed in this particular area, I don't see why it wouldn't be the architect of the mansion himself. This isn't exactly the first time you encounter a Crimson Head zombie, so it's not a reveal to the new enemy type you'll be facing off against, even though it would have worked well for it. But it does work well for a mini boss fight if you're only carrying a handgun. There is no evidence stating that this is not George Trevor, 
but there is a file titled V Act describing something interesting. It reads, There is now evidence that when the host loses consciousness, the body goes into a dormant state. During this time, the virus becomes active, rapidly transforming and reconstructing the basic composition of the body. The host eventually mutates into a humanoid creature. We call them VX. The VX speed and amazing muscular development are particularly noteworthy. After transformation, it becomes more agile and aggressive. Already four of our researchers have died trying to feed it, turning the place into an instant bloodbath. Ever since this tragic and barbaric accident, we have decided to call its kind Crimson Heads. That dangerous and precious prototype specimen can't be left there. We have to figure out a way to deal with it. Termination is definitely not an option. We finally decided to freeze the specimen and confine the body inside the basement of the backyard cemetery. So as you can see, the person who wrote this letter did not mention exactly who this prototype specimen was, but I don't see why it wouldn't be George Trevor seeing as they were experimenting with many human bodies. If the T-Virus was injected into George's dying body, wouldn't this mean that he became a zombie and stayed dormant due to his condition and then transformed into a crimson head? It makes sense that this would be the first case of a dormant zombie, correct? Some of you are wondering why George Trevor was having trouble escaping when there weren't zombies or Cerberus in and outside the mansion. Why wasn't he capable of escaping when he was the architect of the mansion? And the answer to that is that there were guards looking for him, and he couldn't remember everything about the mansion's rooms and puzzles, as his memory would be affected after he was drugged and locked in a room. And even if he found out that there was a switch on the gravestone which would reveal a secret lower entrance, there would be Umbrella staff members and a guard in this area. It's the location where you can turn on the power for the elevator. But what's also near this area is the kitchen. If George Trevor still had enough energy to find the switch, descend down the ladder, and avoid running into anyone in this passage, he could have reached the kitchen and saved himself from starving to death. But since you do run into zombies in this area, chances are that it was a passage where employees would normally be in place. George Trevor was a well-known man, and it's possible that they buried his body somewhere in the Arkley Mountains, but then again, we know what Umbrella does with human bodies. They're used for nothing other than experimentations. It may not have been stated as to who this prototype specimen was that became the first Crimson Head, but I think this analysis speaks for itself and he became a useful study. An architect and specimen who would be used as Spencer's guard dog for intruders in his backyard cemetery. In the manhua of Resident Evil Zero, they actually gave Billy a different ending that explains why you never see him after Zero. It's not exactly the best outcome for him, and again, it's not canon, and I wouldn't even say it's my explanation for why he went missing. So to best summarize it, in the manhua, they included a new tortured creature with wings, and this creature was kept in the coffin that is seen in the remake of Resident Evil 1. In the game, the coffin contains a crimson head zombie but not in the Manhua. So this creature awakens and leaves the coffin to attack the main characters. And at one point, Billy injects himself with a virus that gives him super strength. The illustrators made him look like a Super Saiyan straight out of Dragon Ball Z. The creature, by the way, was known as the Zombie King. And after it was defeated, Billy absorbed its power and became the new Zombie King himself. Rebecca was unconscious when this happened and Billy then proceeds to take her to a secure room in the Umbrella Castle as apparently in this version, it's an Umbrella Castle instead of the Umbrella Executive Training School. So he drops her off, the Alpha Team helicopter arrives near their location, Rebecca wakes up, she sees the helicopter and contacts them with a radio, she prepares to meet them, and as for Billy, he apparently decides to replace the tortured creature by entering its coffin and sleep until someone makes their way to the cave and decides to awaken him. Problem is, they never did work on a Resident Evil 1 Manhua, so Billy just became this new creature who would forever stay dormant as the story ended, and that was it for him. That's it for the video. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button to give this video a chance to grow. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters for their impeccable generosity. Your support means a lot to me, and you are part of the reason why I try to make the best content that I can. And if you like this content, 
Check out the rest of my channel. You'll find more entertainment from separate franchises I like to cover, such as Mortal Kombat, Dragon Ball Z, Celebrity Deathmatch, Men in Black, The Mask, Batman Comics, The Terminator, TMNT, Dino Crisis, Resident Evil, and more. If you're a Patreon supporter, check out my exclusive videos such as the Gantz content. And if you'd like to show your support, go to my Patreon and support the channel, which is only a dollar. Sacrifice that McChicken for extra quality content, my friend. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video, and remember to have an awesome day.